So, hello, welcome back. Uh, for today's video, I was thinking that I would just draw in my sketchbook and then talk about my first art sale experience because that's something I've been wanting to share with you guys. Um, and then I was thinking, I won't just draw. I do want to color whatever I'm drawing in. I was thinking of drawing like a page of frogs because um, frogs are just, they're so adorable. But then I was like, what do I color them in with? I have my Ohuhu markers, and then I have a lot of paint. And I wanted to do gouache, but um, some, something, it's, it's not looking great. <laughs> um, I've had these since like 2020, and I haven't touched them in like over a year. So maybe we'll leave that for another day because I don't feel like going through <laughs> this right now. Um, ooh, that was loud. Cri click, crisp, click. Um, I do have some like acrylics that I got from Walmart. Super cheap. But then I was like, no, I don't want to do these ones. I do have Holbein acrylic wash, which I do like using them. The only problem with using them is that they're a pain in the butt to have to mix because I got those for my color theory class and so we had to have we didn't have the primary colors because we had like the cool and warm of each of the primary colors so we had a warm yellow and a cool yellow so that when we mix them together it makes a primary yellow and so if we want the primary colors, we have to mix them. And it's kind of just like a real pain. I've realized that I don't like having to mix those. I'd like to have just my yellow and my red and my blue ready for me. So that's kind of a pain. I do have primaries and golden, but if I were to choose, I would do the Holbein acrylic gouache instead of golden, just cause I like that the Holbein is matte versus the golden has a, like a glossy finish, which I don't like. So, yeah, maybe I'll use Holbein then. Maybe, you know, maybe that's what I do. And then maybe I do draw some stuff in with the Ohuhu markers, but I really wanted to paint today. So definitely we'll be painting. All right, so story time about my first art style experience. The first thing that I want to talk about is how did I even get into doing my first art sale? So back in November of last year, so November 2023, I was just, you know, taking my art classes as one does in college. And at the end of class, my professor said, hey, we're going to be doing an art sale in December. So if any of you are interested, please uh, take one of these flyers. There's going to be an information meeting next week. And the information meeting was like the week before thanksgiving break and so i was like oh wait what if i can sell my stickers because um haha <laughs> funny thing i have a whole bunch of stickers that i've made but i haven't you know sold any yet because i wasn't i didn't open my shop yet side note my shop's opening march 1st so uh keep a lookout for that but yeah so my professor was like hey you know check out the info meeting if it's something you're interested so the next week i went and went to that info meeting for the art sale and I was like after hearing all the information I'm like oh I really want to do this I kind of I want to see how well my um how well my art does in a professional setting yeah so I decided after the info meeting that I was like hey I want to do this and so I emailed the guy who was in charge of this to let him know that yeah I want to do this and I was just I was really excited I wanted to see how my art did and uh it was a pretty low risk for an art sale it wasn't like oh you have to pay up front uh 200 for a table no it was whatever you set your price to that item you get 70 percent the school's gallery gets 30 and so it was you know not really a risk if i didn't sell anything then i didn't have to pay anything to them it's just we both get nothing so i didn't really feel like i would be losing anything by having this be done as an experience it's if anything i would gain experience from this um oh and another thing i forgot to mention was that alongside the you know the 70 30 split i also had to volunteer i'm like doing air quotes volunteer three hours of my time to like help 
run the gallery so whether that be I like I I'm a cashier or I package people's orders for them for like whatever they're buying there was supposed to be six hours total for each booth but I was sharing my booth with one of my friends so we both had like our own shift so one three hour shift for me one three hour shift for my friend at this point in time after having signed up to be a part of the art sale I really only had stickers to sell and I was like oh man I should really sell more than just stickers so for like the past yeah a year now i've been crocheting for a year i so i decided to s try and make some crochet stuff that i could sell and so i'd already had a few things that i didn't really need or use that i could sell the art sale started on the 6th december 6th and, and it went through december 8th so a three-day thing but yeah so up until december 6th i was just making a whole bunch of crochet things. I made jellyfish, I made a cow, I made hamburger coasters, um, and then I did find, like, pot holders that I'd made when I was, like, a kid. That's just kind of, they've been there, so I was like, you know what, though, just try and sell them, see what happens. And so, on December 5th, the day before the art sale, we had to set up our booths, and here's what mine looked like! So yeah, that's that's what I made. <laughs> Definitely not fancy by any means, but you know, an honest start. <laughs> and then here comes December 6th, the, the day. It's the day of the art sale. I was like super duper excited. I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I hope that, you know, my art sells. I hope people like what I'm making, uh, you know, and then I was one of the people to work the first shift so i was working bright and early 7 30 in the morning getting stuff set up um because the art sale opened at 8 in the morning and so i'd be working until 7 8 30 9 30 10 30 11 something like that yeah so i was working until then i was one of the cashiers and you know as a cashier i'm seeing what's being sold and within the first 30 minutes my cow was sold my cow like what someone bought my art that was so crazy to see and witness and be like oh my gosh someone someone loved what i made and they bought it and they you know they're taking it home so that was that was really cool and exciting like oh my gosh i cannot express to you guys like how good that made me feel like oh my gosh someone appreciates my art it's it's mind-blowing during the rest of my shift, I did see a few of my stickers being sold, but other than that, there wasn't really much during when I was working, but, you know, my goal was complete. I wanted to sell one thing, and I achieved that. That's more, honestly, than I thought was going to sell. I didn't think anybody would want my stuff, because, you see, the art sale typically was meant for just people who wanted to sell their pottery and glassware but this year they had opened it up so that anybody can sell anything that they made so i was like really happy and proud of myself and at the end of the day most of my crochet items were sold and one of my one of my professors bought one of my crochet items he bought one of my hamburger coaster sets and like that oh, that made me feel so happy like it is such a compliment to you know have a professor like what i made enough that he bought it he bought that and like supported me and oh my gosh my heart was so whole that day like oh he made my day during school at that time i had classes every day so when i wasn't working and the art sale was going on i would just be going in and out and in and out and in and out of the gallery to um you know reorganize my stuff because people would go through you know kind of make things disorganize i'm trying to make sure it looks neat but also see like oh what what was sold and i was just like super duper excited like it was a wonderful experience i didn't end up selling everything i sold the majority of my crochet stuff a few pot holders and some stickers the stickers didn't sell too well with this audience stickers maybe you know this not the right place the right setting because definitely i feel like it if I were to do an art sale or art market somewhere else, they would definitely do better. But this was a wonderful experience, and I'm really glad I did it and took part in it. I think I ended up making $375 before the 30% was taken off. So 
way more than I thought I would be getting. But yeah, I, I really loved it. It was really encouraging to me. This is the event that happened that I had mentioned in my introduction YouTube video that encouraged me to finally like make my YouTube channel because it's like, oh my gosh, people actually like my art? What? And so it was just this really big, like, big motivation booster that's like, okay, now I, I've really got to try and do my art stuff, you know, not just focus on school, but try and do my art practice outside of it. So if any of you ever have the opportunity to participate in an art sale like this with your school or something that's like super low risk, I would definitely recommend doing it just for the experience. See how it goes, because I don't regret it. It was a great time. I loved it. Good things. Good things. Good times. Just so yeah. So that's the story about my first art sale experience. And I definitely want to look into doing, you know, or being a part of an art market in the future. I have a lot of cute little crocheted stuffed animals that I made in January or in, have been making since January that I want to sell in, you know, an art market setting. Oh my gosh, you guys, we hit 100 subscribers. This is crazy. And thank you to all of you who have subscribed. You have all made me so, so happy. Anyway, be sure to like, subscribe. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.